The next financial crisis that rocks America won't be driven by bankers behaving badly. It will in fact be driven by pension funds that cannot pay out what they promised to retirees. According to one pension advocacy organization, nearly 1 million working and retired Americans are covered by pension plans at risk of collapse right now. The looming pension crisis is not limited by geography or economic focus. These including former public employees such as members of South Carolina's government pension plan, which covers roughly 550,000 people, one out of nine state residents, and is a staggering $24.1 billion in the red. This includes former blue-collar workers such as roughly 100,000 coal miners who face serious cuts in pension payments and health coverage thanks to a nearly $6 billion shortfall in the plan for the United Mine Workers of America. And when the bill comes due, we will all be in very big trouble. In 2014, Detroit retirees learned the consequences of waiting too long to reform pensions. Retirees took a $1.3 billion hit to their pensions because of a mismanaged and underfunded system. Michigan taxpayers had to pay $200 million to clean up the problem. And the problem's not even clean. Chicago's pensions are even worse. Their pension shortfall just got bigger with $11.5 billion. It's bad enough to consider the philosophical fallout here when reneging on the promise of a pension and thus causing even more distrust of banks and retirement planners. But I'm speaking about a cold numbers-based perspective that causes a drag on many parts of the American economy. Consider the following. Pensioners have no flexibility. According to a Bureau of Labor Statistics report from 2015, the average household income of someone older than age 75 is $34,097, and their average expenses exceed that slightly at $34,382. It is not an exaggeration then to say that even a modest reduction in retirement income makes a typical budget of a 75-year-old unsustainable, even when the average budget is far from luxurious at current levels. This inflexibility is hard financial reality of someone who is no longer able to work and is reliant on means other than labor to make ends meet. Social Security is in a tight spot. So who will step in to support those former pensioners? Perhaps the government via Social Security, except that program itself is in a crisis and will see its trust fund go to zero just 17 years from now in 2034 based on the current structure of the system. If millions of pensions go bust and retirees have no other savings to fall back on, it will be nigh impossible to cut benefits or reduce the drag on this program. But won't a pension collapse mean we desperately need Social Security even in an imperfect form well beyond 2034? The guarantee is no solution. There is an organization, the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation, or PBGC, which is meant to ensure pensions against failure. However, it was created in 1974 as part of a host of financial reforms and is far from a perfect solution, primarily because it's funded by premiums from defined benefit plan sponsors and assets seized from former plan sponsors that have entered bankruptcy. What happens when a handful of troubled pension funds turns into dozens or hundreds? Remember, the PBGC guarantees a certain amount that is decidedly lower than your full pension, as members of the Roll Carrier 707 Pension Fund learned when the group protected their pensions by helping to pay benefits, which had been reduced from $1,313 per person per month to $570. And that's better than zero, but hardly encouraging. This is not about helping baby boomers fund an annual cruise to the Caribbean. Older, low-income pensioners are not saving their money. Instead, they are spending it on necessities such as food, housing, health care, and transportation. That means every penny you reduce from their budget means a penny in spending that is removed from the U.S. economy. Anyone who has taken an economy one-on-one -on -one knows about the multiplier effect, where one dollar extra spend can produce a much larger amount of economic activity as that dollar circulates around businesses, consumers, and banks. Or in this case, how one less dollar in spending causes an equally powerful cascade of negative consequences. By helping ward against a pension crisis, America will be protecting its economy for everyone, plain and simple. But that requires some tough decisions on all sides. For instance, the U.S. Treasury denied a cut to New York Teamsters pension plan that was proposed last year. But now the fund is on the brink of collapse, and its recipients are facing benefits that are in some cases one-third what they were 15 years ago. Like Social Security, current workers can't contribute enough to offset the big obligations owed to retirees. And as with the flagship entitlement program, it's up to regulators and legislators to step in even when it may not be easy in order to keep the system from collapsing. Let's hope they make both pension reform and social security reform a priority in the near future. The chance of this happening is very unlikely. Now that the primary political distraction seems to be a wall between us and Mexico, the repeal of Obamacare for Ryan Care, and the ongoing illusion of a fight against terrorism, it looks like it will ultimately be every man for himself. The question for you to consider is whether or not your sole financial life depends on paper-based liabilities or are you holding something tangible and intrinsically valuable that can't be printed or created digitally? Just something worth thinking about.